Hey guys, Darkstone here, and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Now, the Stanley Parable, I've at least watched this a little bit in the past, since it's not necessarily the newest of games. But, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So, off your seatbelts. Prepare for the biggest mind fuck we're ever going to do in video games. Now I won't talk much in it during the series, only because the narration is amazing. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly this job, and Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So, yeah. We are currently a businessman, as far as I know, and we're not getting orders. So now we're standing up for ourselves and going explore. The narration really builds the entire game itself, so I will not necessarily be talking the most. One of the biggest things, one of one of the big things that I'm going to try to do, though, is. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Whoops. I was about to say that I was going to try listening to the narrator and doing as the narrator says, but hopefully it's not too late. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Yes. Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? Yes. No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. Please. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Really? Am 
must do it. So tedious. It's worth it. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. I'll screw you too. It doesn't even help that I can click fast. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417, uh, 417, 417, 417, where is... It is happening. Ooh, Shush. Great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. 437... There it is. Excellent! I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. I will get the achievement. Now, back to door number 437. So demanding. You can at least say please. Come on. Let's see, how about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? Where's the copy machine? All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Come on, you can at least say please. On, okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. There's 419. Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Wait, 416 is this way. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! Wow, he really must love copying his... Uh, never mind. I, I wasn't... Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Better get it now. Yes! We did it! Yeah, Chief, thank oh, God. wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? I was thinking it was going to be for five clicks. Not really much more to say for that. I think we're just going to continue this now that that little detour has been done. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So I will listen to him for this series this episode. Next episode I may just do one thing near the end wrong because I know this game has multiple endings and we'll see exactly what happens. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office hoping he might find an answer there. Well... I don't think you guys want to wait here for the... 40 minutes or so to see the JPEG. Of... I don't actually even remember. But I'm not waiting. Too much content. It's the broom room! 
Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Oh, this is the one thing that I'm actually going to do. Broom. There was nothing here. Broom. No choice to make, no path to follow, broom. just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. I don't care, I like the broom room. Even if I have claustrophobia. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. If only I could jump. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. No. Closed. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. It's a broom closet. I don't get to see these every day. And you again, do I don't realize leave. there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. That's why I'm I still never here. I would have thought to mention it. Just look at all these pipes. Cords. Maybe I want to lick you, this cords. is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. If only I hope it, your that friends was true. find this concerning. If only this was true, I wish there was a bro broom closet ending. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Hey, drugs and hookers are not bad. They make you feel good. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I've already been dead. Been dead for a long time. I'm a wither skeleton. I've gone to hell and back. I just really like brooms. They really sweep you off your feet. And I mean, just look at that. It's a wrench. That's what I died with. Stranded across the forehead. And then I returned it. So I think that actually is it. That, that, that might be all this room actually has to offer. So let's continue. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Too bad. Same person. Just didn't like you. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Eh, yeah, never mind. That's for another episode. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth 
that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I don't know why I was clicking that. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumb, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Yay, adventure! Seems like my home. Really dark. Yeah. Be nice. And down we go. So again, we're doing the and um, this ending is going to be the Listen to the narrator. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Um, answers. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, I guess I have to. This may be next episode, in addition to something else. It's like my soul. Really, really dark. Let's lighten this place up a little bit. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Why do they have my monitor set up? These, these are all mine. Shush. Now the monitors See? jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. I know that, that one all, all the way over there says fired. Which definitely would make more sense. Yeah, it says fired. Where's my number? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? The world is blind. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. You'd have to think, how big is this building? How far does it reach up? It's kind of... Downing. Oh, 
Um, Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Did I do it? Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he Back been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none he of this mattered to him. For it was not so. knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Maybe I don't wanna. Seems really bright. It kinda hurts. Imagine why is that cut off? Is there still that building? Uh, Stanley uh, felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Another achievement. So I think that will end it here. That is the ending for what the f but um I guess that'll be the jump right into the next episode from here. See you guys next time. And Goodbye.